So in this video lecture, I'm going to cover non-Mendelian genetics. What does that mean? These are genetics that don't follow Gregor Mendel's uh, theories and patterns and laws. They kind of a little special case. Let's go over some of these specialities. So some traits don't show Mendelian inheritance. Well, what does that mean? They're, they are um, following, quote, different rules. Mendelian se segregation of alleles can be uh, disguised by a variety of factors. Here's a couple here. I'm going to kind of mention a few of them. Incomplete dominance, co-dominance, sex-linked factors, environmental effects. So there's a lot of things that are going to cause genes not to be as simple as we saw with Gregor Mendel and his pea plants. So looking at the first one here, uh, incomplete dominance. So this is kind of a good one to kind of go through and review. Neither allele is completely dominant over the other. In this case, we have big R representing red petals and little r representing white petals. When we cross these two together, red isn't dominant over white, white's not dominant over red, we get a blending. The heterozygote individuals, the big R, little r's, have a phenotype that's a blending of the two alleles, in this case, pink. So we have a Red with a white producing heterozygotes would be pink, uh, pinkish purple in this case. So this is just kind of showing incomplete dominance. One isn't dominant over the other, it's incomplete. They kind of get this blending, causing the heterozygotes to have their own look or phenotype. We also have something called codominance. So as this name implies, Two equally dominant alleles are expressed at the same time. Heterozygous phenotype will have both phenotypes visible. So um, certain genes in the example with hemoglobin is made from recessive alleles. It's a sickling gene, so sickle cell anemia, where we're getting both the normal um, hemoglobin and the sickle trait um, also being um, observed. Maybe something easier to kind of visually picture with codominance is if we have a white cow, we have a brown cow. If they're exhibiting codominance, we're getting a white cow with brown spots, essentially. Getting that codominance, we're seeing the white and the brown. Unlike our previous example here, we look at incomplete dominance, we have a blending. We don't have a blending here, we have an expression of both. And with the sickle cell trait, we have the sickle cell gene with also the normal red blood cells. So looking at that sickle cell um, example here, the normal gene and sickle cell gene, well in this case we have two carriers. We have a child that does not have sickle cell name, two normal copies. This one does um, is a carrier for sickle cell, so it does have the gene. Same with this offspring, and sadly this offspring has both copies of sickle cell and probably will not um, survive without any intervention into reproductive age. So it's just an example of following a genotype in inheritance. This is a great kind of combination picture of codominance and incomplete dominance. Here we have codominance, we have the red and the white both being expressed. We have incomplete dominance uh, over here where we have kind of that red and white blending together to make that pink. So be mindful of comparing and con contrasting the difference of codominance and incomplete dominance, both of which are examples of non-Mendelian genetics. So this polygenic inheritance, so this is very important when we're looking at blood type, for example. So if we're looking at blood type, what can be important when we're looking at blood type is that there is this polygenic genes that exist. So more than two alternate alleles. ABO blood grouping is an example. So in this case, we have possible alleles uh, from the female parent, from mom. We have A blood type, B blood type, or in this case, this would be O blood type. Uh, a and B can be codominant if they're expressed if they're present, and I is the recessive, that's what we call that O blood type. So these are the possible alleles from mom, here's the possible alleles from dad, A, B, or in this case um, I, which would be standing for O blood type. Well, we kind of cross these together and we have slightly different colorations here to help make it a little easier to follow. Here we have an A and A, this would be A blood type, A crossed with B here, because we're polygenic, um, we're having that A, B blood type, we're having both being expressed in this case. Here we're having A blood type because O doesn't really have a marker to it. Um, so that I is representing that recessive trait there. So this would just be considered A blood type. Same thing here, A and a B means A, B blood type. B and a B means it's B blood type. And the B and the recessive I would just be B blood type. And here we see the same thing follows through. And the only way to get true O blood type is to have both recessive alleles present here. So you can hopefully see a little color variance as well as kind of that kind of 
mixture of the two on how if you have that recessive, that kind of non-antigen expression, and you have that B blood type, that will be just B. Even if you're B and B, or B in that kind of quote O, you'd have B blood type. This kind of shows again those alleles, gives you a little picture here of A blood type and B, B blood type and A and B, you can see both of those being expressed, and that O group really has no antigens or expression on that outer um, cell of the red blood cell. Antibodies present, so if you have A blood type, you're going to be anti-B, that's a foreign antigen to you, um, and because you're going to have the A antigen and throughout here. It's important that AB has no uh, antibodies because if they had anti-A or B, because they express both of those on their red blood cells, it'd essentially be um, having a reaction that would occur. This is important if you're donating uh, blood or receiving blood that you get one from the similar or compatible uh, group type. So lastly here, these polygenic inheritance. Well, as we always said, it's not as simple as we saw Gregor Mendel and his P-plants. This polygenic inheritance uh, involves multiple genes and a spectrum of results. The uh, example here I give is skin color. It's also true for eye color, height, and a whole host of other genes. Depends on several different gene pairs, a different loci and tandem, alleles for dark skin, or incomplete downloads for those for light. Uh, first generation of offspring each have three units of darkness and intermediate pigmentation. Kind of that regression to the mean here. Some very uh, light skinned here and a very dark skinned here. We can kind of see how those gametes are coming together. Uh, because we have this F1 generation where we have someone that's way at the kind of zero end of the skin pigment color and someone that's very dark at the f other end with first generations right in the middle. But then we could see that their offspring can have the whole kind of gamut here. Uh, the majority will fit in the, kind of that two to four skin color type, but you could see that there's a potential for a six and a zero as well. So that second generation of offspring have a wide variation in pigments because of this kind of mixing of genes here. So hopefully that provides a little bit of a background here looking at genes and looking at these genes that don't follow Gregor Mendel's set laws.